I'm Becky, and welcome to our channel. Mead and I just started traveling full time with our dogs Fern and Ivy, and this video marks the beginning of a new chapter in our lives. We've had a ton of adventures over the last five summers traveling yeah, out west. What is that, Becky? What is this weather? And we've made some really great friends along the way. <laughs> we've had our share of highs. <laughs> and of course lows too. And we've been awed into silence by stunning natural beauty. Oftentimes in the most unexpected of places. And it's in those moments that I found peace and serenity to calm my never quiet mind. And I really needed a respite from the rat race of normal life. So come along and join us. We hope our meanderings inspire you in some way. There's really no telling what's down the next dirt road or across that Roaring Creek, but I kind of like it that way. Hank, meet your new replacement. Name to be determined. <laughs> Okay, tear out update day three. We got a lot done today. We did a lot of insulation removal, which is a really, really gross job. Um, we still have some more to do behind this panel we got off today, and then there's insulation behind there. And then we got both of the seats out up front here, and there's our wiring that we have to figure out before we can take that down. And yeah, long hard day. And this was the game changer. We got the dumpster today and it's, it's already pretty full. We started on the process of removing all the old insulation, which was a nasty job. And then adding in all of our new insulation, which that phase of the build seemed to take forever. We eventually got to the fun stuff, which was putting in the RV door and then cutting out the space for the max air fan, which was pretty tough because Mead had to go through solid aluminum studs. Then we finally got to do the ceiling, which was really fun and compared to our last fan was pretty simple. I then learned how to make drawers. So after about two years of working on Earl on and off, um, we are finally moved into him and living on the road full time. And uh, we've had some time to kind of reflect on how we got here and the process. And um, I, we think it's important to mention that while everything looks so beautiful and so done now um and everything we we built everything to specifications for how we want to live on the road we really did spend about six years um progressing to this moment we took multiple trips uh two to three week trips in the subaru with the dogs um we drove from texas to oregon and then we spent multiple weeks in new mexico and then um when we finally had a little bit of cash on hand, we bought our first rig, which was Hank, which was the, the big blue van. Um, and we spent a couple years building him out. And then we went uh, every summer for one to two to three months. Um, and then when we figured out that this is really what we wanted to do, we wanted to live on the road. We wanted to live mobily. 
that's when we decided we wanted, we needed a bigger space. And so, um, after a lot of research, you know, we looked at short school buses, we decided on an ambulance style and, um, Earl is technically an ERV, which is a emergency response vehicle. It was a red cross vehicle. We wanted it for the extra head height. Um, so we, uh, yeah, then we spent two years basically tearing everything out. And uh, last summer, uh, summer of 2022, we lived in it for three months while traveling and kind of tweaked our layout based off of how that summer went. Um, and then uh, we came back from that summer and uh, basically finished it up. And now we're, uh, we're on the road. So we'll go into more of the build and the specific things that we've done in later videos. Um, but that, that was how we got here. And we also, Mead especially, spent a lot of time making decisions in his career to really allow him to work mobily. So being able to teach online um, at multiple different colleges, uh, even though he's full, fully retired from full-time teaching, he uh, he is still working part-time. And um, back in Texas, I was selling real estate, and it dawned on me maybe eight months before we left that I could utilize those skills in a more of a administrative type role. So now I'm doing. Uh, transaction management for other agents. So I'm also working remotely and because of Starlink, we can basically work anywhere. So that's been really, really helpful. The other thing that we feel really fortunate about is that we, um, along this process, we um, added a, a friend, lifelong friend slash really she's family um, in Karen and um, she is basically caravanning with us most of the time. Of course, there's going to be times where she's going to peel off and do something and we're going to peel off and do something. But um, it is really nice to have another person in another vehicle on the road with us just in case something happens or, you know, we just it's just nice to have another person there to experience things with us. Um, so she's gonna be in a lot of the videos too, as kind of probably we joke as like comedic relief, but also she's just she's just a really good friend. Um, so that's that's another thing that's really special for us as we embark on this adventure together. Karen, go up higher with your feetsies. No more. Why not? And the last thing we want to mention is that we feel very, very blessed to be able to live this way. We definitely acknowledge that this is a choice for us and we see it as an adventure. Um, but we know not everybody who lives mobily has that privilege. So um, we just feel very, very grateful and thankful that we are here now and we get to experience life like this because this is something that we've been wanting for a really long time. So we are getting ready to hit the road and we're really excited on where we're going to go first and where the road's going to lead us. So we hope that you enjoy watching what we get into. <laughs> really hard. Fern, not there, you have four wheel drive. Fern. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
that better? <laughs> Come here, Fernie. Oh, I'm sorry, Fern Dog. <laughs> There you go, Fern. I don't want him to sting me. <laughs> really pretty. Yeah. Look, Fernie. Let me see. Oh, be gentle. Okay. You don't put him away now, okay? You know, you eat him. You got it? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good girl, Fern. If you make me wipe out. <laughs> don't know me I'm actually pretty terrified of heights um, there's a reason why I'm a top rope queen I haven't quite figured okay. out yet how to lead without crying Ooh, yeah. wow that's way up there When it comes to creek crossings, Fern is a natural. She absolutely loves the water and will get in any time of day. Ivy, on the other hand, needs a little more encouragement. So I try to, you know, give her a good pep talk before we go. Remind her that it's, it's gonna be okay. And then begrudgingly, when all else fails, 
you will brave the waters. And then of course we have to celebrate her victory getting across the creek. Unfortunately for her, this day meant a lot of creek crossings and she will do just about anything to try to avoid getting wet. Even if it's not so graceful. Million Dollar Highway is kind of a nail-biting road, and we were just amazed at how many people were happy to pass us, even though we were going the speed limit. It wasn't maybe an hour later we were talking to a local and heard the sirens going off, and, and she said, yeah, probably someone ran themselves off of Million Dollar Highway. So what you can't tell is there's some really steep drop-offs on this road. fancy his and her desks look how nice I can get up easily you can get up we have these nice leg lagoon I think they're called lagoon arms yep and uh, yeah it's pretty cool we can both work yeah they work great and uh, next starling get our work done then go adventure do it all over again right yeah it's awesome So we made it to day 11 before we got our first mechanical mishap, so to say. Um, <clears throat> we built this rig specifically to go up this road that we named Bruce the Bear Road. 
which is Portland Road in Ure. It's a um, pretty stout, short but steep climb up to this beautiful meadow where we were hoping to camp for at least a couple nights. Um, and Earl was doing great. He was handling all the rocks. He was he was performing phenomenally for how heavy he is. Um, I was trailing me behind on foot with the dogs and I all of a sudden noticed something was leaking um, all over the ground and it looked like transmission fluid. So we got almost to the top and found a, uh, a level spot to stop. And Mead noticed there was some smoke coming out from underneath Earl and sure enough, the transmission was leaking and we found that it was a leak at the front seal. So thankfully, not five minutes after we stopped, a local woman named Lauren with her two dogs, Dune and Odin, uh, stopped by and they, you know, chatted with us. She offered to help us. She offered to let us borrow her Jeep um, to take it into town the next day to pick up some transmission fluid. So yeah, this morning we walked down to town. It was about a mile to her house, grabbed the uh, quote unquote beater Jeep that she left the keys in for us, which was <laughs> a really incredible um, that she had just met us maybe five minutes of chatting and she, you know, gave us the keys to her car to go run errands. So now we're going to be en route to Montrose to go to a transmission shop to see what we need to do. We wanted to be in this beautiful spot, but we ended up here instead. But honestly, I'm so glad it happened here. We met Lauren and uh, it's life on the road. and comfy there? Yeah? Ooh, tough going.
tough, Fern. I think it's harder for us than for them. update on Earl's transmission issue. We uh, went to a shop in Montrose, top-notch shop, and we decided we are going to swap out. And basically we're gonna upgrade his transmission. Um, so that's gonna take about a week and a half to two weeks to build and then get to the shop. So the mechanic assured us that as long as we're not pushing it too hard, that we can drive him okay, kind of watch the levels, um, watch the temperatures. So we are at a beautiful camp spot right now um, off of Colorado 145 uh, in the Aspen. And we're gonna hang out here for a couple of days and then we're going to limp it over to Moab and camp with some friends for, I don't know, maybe a week or so, and then head on over to Montrose, um, where Earl's gonna get a nice little upgrade that will allow us to go up any pass we want, and we won't have to worry. So in the meantime, we are just going to enjoy the beautiful fall weather. So yeah, that's about it.